my background was I started lifting weights, fell in love with it, had a real life trainer. He was great. Taught me my way around the weight room. Awesome. He moved, got another trainer. Life with her was great. She had zero nutritional background Mm -hmm. and I was getting strength happening, but man, was I packing on the pounds Mm. because I was eating more because I was hungry all the time. Sure. So that didn't work. So then I went to my first trainer that got me into my fitness pal and macros and all of that sort of stuff. And that went really, really well, except I reached a point where I, I stalled and I wasn't, I wasn't compliant and things weren't moving. And He actually said to me, oh, I think you have an eating disorder. And I don't know if we really had this talk, Jared, but, you know, I've got a couple of university degrees, a great job. I I like to think that I'm fairly well read, all the rest of it. And I was crushed when he said that. I bet. So I thought, thought, do I? Maybe I do. I I need to look this up. Like, Like, it just kind of made everything in my world shift. And you think... And I see this with other people in our community on Facebook. We all know what to do. It's not rocket science, but we all have different pieces of the puzzle and it's trying to figure it all out together. And so then uh, for a bunch of reasons, I finished with that trainer with another trainer, amazing woman, loved my program. Things are going well. But again, the compliance wasn't there. And I was reaching the end of my time with her. And I was in your 3M training. I think it was back Mm -hmm. in January. And I don't know if you remember this, but you shared or or, or somehow the conversation turned around to cravings. And I shared how, you know, I eat healthy. I I do so well. And then a craving hits me. Mm -hmm. And I have a very specific craving, very specific candy, a very specific potato chip, a very specific dip. And my trainer at the time said, oh, just don't keep any of that in the house. And I was like, I'm a growing ass woman. (laughs) I get in my car and I drive and I buy it. Yeah. I think the house isn't going to stop me. And you said, you go to the gas gas station or the convenience store or whatever every day. And you buy the smallest little packet. And my trainer has access or had access to my fitness pal, my my account, my fitness pal. And so she's like, Marjorie, like, what are you doing? Why are you eating all this junk every day? (laughs) And I did not have the balls to say to her. This is what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And my contract with her finished and, and it was all good. That was a magical conversion though, when you told me that, because that worked with the, whatever that Neanderthal base part is of my brain. It got me past that concept of restriction and yeah. scarcity and retrained me because of course, as many of us, that childhood Mm -hmm. Uh, treats to feel better treats on Friday night you turn into an adult and go woohoo I have my own paycheck no parents around I'm gonna eat eat whatever I want every day yeah and I did and 15 years later in an unhappy marriage later the pounds started packing on and by then all that emotional eating for a bunch of reasons isn't great so you taught me that and you taught me the habit tracker for the 3m habits. And that was another game changer. So when I finished that, and I talked with your team about, you know, coaching with you and because you offer it all, right? Like mm-hmm. you offer everything. I didn't know the mind game. This one piece that yep. was missing. It just was like, oh, it was like that. It was like I was playing a video game and I just couldn't get past that level, right? I needed mm-hmm. the cheat code, but I needed mm-hmm. the walkthrough. And the 180 Academy was it. And That's I just devoured it. I just went through it and through it and through it and through it and through it. And one of the things I did after that, ended and I was I'd started the 180 with you was I put I did, what I mean was ended with the other coach I was with I realized that I'd been trying to diet or I'd been in a diet mentality albeit unsuccessful for the most part for two years even though I was going away for holidays and I would track or whatever in my mind I was still in this diet mentality so the first thing I did was I put myself into maintenance for two weeks holy cow was that ever <laughs> liberating yeah I, I, I couldn't even half the time eat all the calories, but it was mentally liberating yeah. because I was no longer in this diet mindset, yep. taking the lessons from 180. And, and another one that really, really was transformational for me was journaling. And you were the first person, like, I don't like to think that I'm thick in the mind, but maybe I am because people have talked to me about journaling for so long, but everybody looks at it from a different point of view. Yep. And some people, they want the journaling prompts. and the way you put it together nailed it for me. But you were the first person, and I've, you know, been following people on Instagram and trainers and all that sure. for years now. You were the first person, Jared, 
who actually illustrated how you do it and the process you go through. And you've done that a number of times. And I've been meditating for a long time and that was great for my blood pressure. But oh, the yeah. journaling is what was a, was like the trifecta of the journaling, the habit tracking, like eating that same treat every day. So I got to the point where I'll, I, you know, I really don't care if I have it. I still will go and enjoy those things sure. but have them mindfully. I don't want to admit to this. And I was searching and searching and searching and frustrated and feeling like a failure because the people I hired, the professionals I spoke to, they all talked about the inner game, but nothing that they were suggesting to me was resolving my issues. Being accountable, I was accountable but I wasn't compliant. Sure. Why wasn't I compliant? Because I was emotionally eating. So why was I emotionally eating? Why couldn't you just stop? Because being told to, when you have a craving, go outside for a walk, all those things. And I would, I would do all of that, but the craving didn't go away, it got worse. But I would sit there and go, wow, I'm, I'm fucking pathetic. Like, why can I not deal with this? What am I doing wrong? I meditate, I do the walk, I do the gym. Why are other people able to resolve these issues and I can't? And so when you ask me, when did that start? Like, I've known about it for a long, long time. Sure. The question is, how come nobody else tells us what these answers are, Jared? You know, I am 58 years old. And to think that I'm now getting all this stuff together in my life, it's pretty interesting. But Jared, if I hadn't found you, and I, I was thinking about this, I that we were going to be talking today, I was thinking about this, like, if I hadn't discovered you, It'd be really shitty. It would be really, really, really shitty. Absolutely. It's uh, very, very, very lucky. 